Hi, and welcome to this lesson on the time value of money. I am Kyle Ashcraft, CPA, and the founder of Maxwell CPA Review. My goal in this video is to help you better understand some of the terms associated with time value of money, to help you visualize what present value versus future value means, and then ultimately to go through four different examples to see how we calculate them, specifically using Excel formulas. So let's jump into it. So if you have ever had a college class on accounting or finance, you've probably heard a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. But what does that really mean? Why is that the case? Think of it as a dollar today is more powerful than a dollar tomorrow. And there are a few reasons why. First, if you have the option between getting a dollar today and getting it tomorrow, today it would be guaranteed, but tomorrow it's not guaranteed that you would actually get it. Second, you can use a dollar today for interest or for generating uh, capital gains. So you could theoretically take that $1, invest it into a brokerage account, and then get a return on the market, or invest it into an interest-bearing savings account and generate interest that way. So then a dollar today may be worth a dollar and 10 cents in the future. And then the third reason is because of inflation. So in general, prices increase by about two or 3% a year. This means that a dollar today is going to be much more powerful than a dollar in 20 years. Just like if you ask your parents or grandparents how much something used to cost, it would be much less because a dollar before was much more powerful than a dollar today, and a dollar today is much more powerful than a dollar in the future. So this is a general overview of why it's worth more, but let's talk about when we use present value versus future value. For present value, you're looking at future items and trying to calculate how much they're worth in today's dollars. So you're looking into the future to figure out how much it's worth in the present value. For the future value, you're doing the opposite. You're taking an amount today and figuring out how much that's going to be worth in the future. So the two are just a matter of, are you standing from the perspective of a future value or from the perspective of the present value? Let's first talk about with accounting requirements like US GAAP, we're often using the present value approach more than future value because um, there are requirements like when we have a note receivable that's more than a year old, we need to discount it back to the present value. Um, so we use it often for accounting requirements. For investment opportunities, we're often using the future value. Like I mentioned before, we want to see how much our investment is going to be worth in the future. We could say, I want to start a retirement account to where I invest $50 every year. How much will that be worth in 50 years? So we're figuring out the future value. So with decision-making, we're going to use present value because we're trying to figure out whether or not we should buy something and we're going to look at the future cash flows it provides us, but in terms of the present, because we need to compare that to what our cash outflows will be to purchase it. So now that we've talked about present value versus future value, let's talk about an annuity versus a lump sum. An annuity is simply a regular payment. So if we're trying to figure out the value of our investment, if we make $50 payments at the end of every year, that would be an annuity. A lump sum is just looking at one sum of money. For example, if you receive $1 million 10 years from now and you're using a discount rate of 8%, what is the present value of that lump sum? And then within annuities, we have an ordinary annuity and then an annuity due. Ordinary annuity means that the payment is made at the end of the period and annuity due means the payment is made right at the beginning of the period. And these result in different amounts because of compounding. Okay, so now that we've talked through the theory of the time value of money, Let's talk through four examples. Let's start with an example for the present value of a lump sum. So you receive a lump sum of 100,000 in five years. At a discount rate of 5%, how much is it worth today? So let's look at how we would figure this out with Excel. So we do present value. The rate is simply 5%. The number of periods is five. There is no payment because this is not an annuity. The future value is 100,000. And then for the type, we can just leave that blank and we'll put a negative here so that way it turns out positive. And this is the present value. So in other words, if we took $78,000 today and invested it, if we could generate a 5% return, then it would be worth $100,000 in five years. Now let's look at an example for the present value of an ordinary annuity. So since this is an annuity, it means there's a regular payment and it means that the payment happens at the end of the period. 
So you receive $20,000, that's the payment, at the end of each year for the next five years. So the number of periods is five. At a 5% discount rate, what is the present value of those future cash streams? So let's talk about how we would enter this. The rate is 5% still. The number of periods is five. This time we have a payment. The future value is zero because we don't have any amount that we're going to be paid at the very end. And then the type, we could just leave this blank because if we leave this last one blank, it assumes an ordinary annuity or we can just enter zero, and that is for an ordinary annuity as well. So this last part of the formula only matters when you're doing an annuity. So if it's an ordinary annuity, you do zero or leave it blank. And if it's an annuity due, then you put one. And there's the answer. Now let's do a calculation for the present value of an annuity due. This means that the payment happens at the beginning of the period. So let's say you are a landlord you receive $1,000 for rent at the beginning of each month for a year. At a discount rate of 5%, what is the present value of the rent payments? So what's interesting here is that we're getting the payment every month. So that means the compounding happens monthly. It happens 12 times a year. This 5% is the annual rate. So we just need to figure out the monthly rate by simply dividing it by 12. Now we're going to calculate the present value. The rate is not 5%, but it's this amount, which was divided by 12. The number of periods is 12, 12 months. The payment is 1,000. The future value is zero because there's not a particular payment we're getting at the very end of uh, this year. And then for the type, we need it to be an annuity due, so we put a one here instead of a zero. So this is what $1,000 rent payments at the beginning of the period at a 5% annual rate would be worth in the present value. Lastly, let's go through an example for the future value of a lump sum. So we invest the $5,000 lump sum today. How much is it going to be worth in the future? So we're generating a 5% return on our investment. And how much will it be worth in 30 years? So this time we do FV. The rate is 5%. The number of periods is 30. There is no payment because we're not making a payment every year. It's just the lump sum of 5,000. The present value is the 5,000. And the type does not matter, so we can just leave that blank. So the future value is $21,609. In other words, if you take $5,000 today and invest it, in 30 years it will be worth $21,609. So that about covers it. In this video, we've talked about the time value of money and its associated terms. We've talked about the difference between the present value versus future value along with where it's generally used. And then we've gone through four examples to see how we actually plug the formulas into Excel and calculate it for ourselves.